Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. So far, the job's already been dug out. We arrived here, the homeowner had it all dug out. We just had to, he even had it formed for the most part. There was just a couple forms left to put in. But uh, it had been sitting like this for quite a while just by wetting it down is what the homeowner did here. So it got well compacted over the time it's been sitting like this. Now we're just coming in here to button it up basically. Tie the rebar, put the concrete in here. Broom finish, we're gonna go ahead and wet join it the day of the pour. This is actually my brother's job. We just happened to uh, be able to catch it on camera. So I wasn't doing anything else. So I came over here, got a little uh, camera action on it, on their procedure, and it's real similar to the way I do it. They've got the rebar in here. It looks like they're going about 18 inch centers on that rebar. That's 3 8 inch rebar. Over here on this little sidewalk extension, and mostly that's just to get around the air conditioner. And we've got a couple different things going on here. We've got some six by six, 10 gauge wire mesh in a portion of it and we've got some uh, rebar in here we've got three eighths on the perimeter and at the one end we got all rebar no mesh but they both do the same job they're going to hold it together that's pretty much what you're hoping to do with any kind of reinforcement is hold the concrete in one place so when it does crack it doesn't start lifting and separating that's the whole kind of idea of it. It's not going to stop it from cracking, but it will try to hold it together. First tool they're going to use after rotting it off is the wood bowl float. That's a four foot wide wood bowl float there. On our joint pattern, we're going to just do one each way on this large section. And then we'll do a short one where it transitions to that narrow area from corner to corner. And then uh, just a couple every like uh, eight feet. Here's a four foot wide Fresno going on. The next step after this would be your joining. And there's the dry line snapping into the concrete so you have a guide when you start running your joiner down and that joiner happens to be about six feet long so it's pretty easy to keep it going straight Now they're just sponging, they have a five gallon bucket with water and a sponge cleaning up the excess that went over onto the existing concrete. Now after they ran that six foot joiner, they're running just the standard walking joiner. It's like a one by one and it's got a half inch radius and it's three quarters of an inch deep. So whenever you're doing crack control on concrete, you want to be about 25% of the depth. Your cuts or weakened plane joints should be 25% to be optimal to get really good crack control.
you can see the broom going right behind the sliders following up the trial guy and when you stay close to whoever's troweling it out if you stay close to him with the broom you won't have to use any water on the surface there's enough moisture in the concrete if you keep close to your troweler So the other portion of the pour is all broomed out because it's all in direct sunlight. So they had to wait a little bit longer on this area because it's shaded. But it turned out real nice. Anyway, thank you for watching the video. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and have a good day. Thanks. Bye.